What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the outliner in order to organize your model. This can be massively important for your speed in working in SketchUp moving forward. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the outliner is a tool in SketchUp designed to help you organize all of your groups and components and other things as well, like section planes and other things like that. But um, what we wanna do is let's start off by taking a look at the outliner and how to turn it on. So the outliner is a tool inside of SketchUp that a lot of people don't know is there, but it's actually massively helpful for helping you manage your different groups and components inside of SketchUp. So this can help you quickly edit objects that are nested inside of groups. Um, I've used it for a ton of different things, including organizing models so I can get cut lists, other things like that. There's a lot of stuff you can do with the outliner, but let's start off and just enable the outliner. And so the way that you can do that, and this is on a PC, is you can go to window, default tray and inside of your default tray you can just check the box for the outliner so if you get a window default tray outliner it's going to show up over here for mac i think you just go in and open up the outliner window i'm not a hundred percent sure on that one but it's it should operate fairly similarly and so once you do that, that's going to give you this little drop down over here in your tray that you can use in order to see all of the different groups in your model so for example this adjustable wrench is actually a component inside of my model. So you can see how it's a component based on the four little squares that are in here. The ones with the single square in here are going to be um, groups. So um, you can go through and notice how when I click on one of these, it's actually going to select the object in my model. So if I select this wood hammer, notice how that's actually being selected in my model right here. Well, this gets really powerful because you can use this in order to control your groups inside of SketchUp. So let's say for example that I wanted to take my two hammers and put them in a group. So typically what we've done in the past is we would select an object like this, do a shift click like this, and then right click and make them a group, right? And you can see how you can see that change over here when that happens. You can also though um, come in here and actually select the objects themselves just using the outliner right here. So you can do a shift click and then you can right click and you can make a group over here. So Notice how the same thing happened, but I didn't actually have to pick them up in my model like this. And so a lot of the time what I'll do is I use the outliner in order to control the organization of my model. So logically in this situation, right, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a toolbox model, but then you want all of the things inside of the toolbox model to move along with it. Like if I move this around right now, right, notice how these objects aren't moving with my toolbox. Well, usually with this toolbox, I'm gonna to want this whole thing to be selected and put in a group. And so what I really want is I really want all of the tools to be inside of my tool toolbox group. So I've got a group in here that has my toolbox inside of it. And within that toolbox group, I've got the different end panels and things like that, right? Well, in this case, I'm going to select this whole thing and I'm gonna put these in a group and I'm gonna label these um, just uh, toolbox wood right here. Well, what I want to do is I want to take all of these tools and I want to drop them inside of the toolbox as well. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to select all of these tools. I'm going to right click on them and I'm going to make them a group and I'm going to right click and rename and I'm going to call these tools. Well, one of the cool things about the outliner is you can change the way that groups are set up just by clicking and dragging. So in this situation, right, previously what I would have had to do when I made that group is I would have had to do a control X, double click inside of this group and do an edit paste in place to put those inside of the group, right? Well, an easier way to do this with the outliner is you could just take that tools group that we created. That's the group that contains all of my different tools. You can just drag that into the toolbox group right here. So now notice how within this toolbox group, I've got my toolbox wood pieces and my tools in here. And so one of the cool things about this is you can also toggle the visibility of the different groups just by clicking on the eye right here. So I can use this in order to turn my wood on and off so I can see the tools better, or I can toggle the tools themselves on and off as well. And so let's say I wanted to get even more organized. Because right now what I have is I have this toolbox and then I have to double click inside of my tools group. And then I have to double click again in order to get to my hammer. So there's a lot of clicking to get to nested objects in a group. Well, what I'm gonna do 
is I'm actually going to organize these by type. And so one thing to note about this is when you're creating things inside of your model, it's really a good idea to label them in the outliner as you go, especially if you're going to try to stay organized because otherwise you just have a group, a group, a group, a group, a group, right? And you can't really tell what's what. So a lot of the time what I'll try to do is I will try to organize my objects as I'm going, especially if I'm doing um, like architectural modeling or something like that. But all you have to do is just right click in here and we're just gonna rename this. So this would be a flathead dash medium. This would be a flathead dash small. So I'm just gonna label the rest of these real quick. And then we'll come back and take a look at how we can use that. All right, so I'm almost done going through and naming these, but I do want to point something out. So right now, notice how there are objects in here that are inside of brackets. So those are objects that are components as opposed to objects that are groups. And so the name that's inside of the bracket is actually the component definition name, which you can see if you go up into your entity info right here. So notice how there's a definition name in here. And remember that components have both a definition as well as individual instances, right? So the definition is the name of the component that's being repeated. So let's say that I was to make a copy of this wrench over here like this, well notice how they both have the same instance name. That's because they're components and they have the same makeup, right? So if I was to double click in here and take this whole thing and let's say we were to apply like a metal material to it or something like that. So notice how when I apply the metal material to this object over here, it's also being applied over here because this is another instance of that same component. However, in addition to the instances having a component definition name, they're also gonna be able to have an instance name. So the instance name, right, is the name of the individual instance. So they both have a definition, so that would be like if you have like a car, right? But then for each car, I have Justin's car, you would have your car, but they're both, you could call them instances of the same car. And so what I could do is I could name this one wrench adjustable one. The second one I could call wrench adjustable two. Well, notice when you do that, when you add an instance name, that instance name is gonna show up in front of the component definition name inside of your outliner right here. And so the reason that this can be really valuable is now, so let's say that I wanted to take my wrenches and put them in a group. Well, the outliner is gonna allow me to do that really quickly because I can just come in here and I can just do a shift click and I can select my wrenches I can right click and I can make them a group. And then I can rename this group wrenches. I can do the same thing with my screwdrivers. So these are all going to be screwdrivers, right? So I did a control click to select these up here, but I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna put them in a group. Right click and I'm gonna call this screwdrivers. Well, in this situation, I might go even further and put my flatheads all in a group. So I could right click and make this a group. I could call this flathead right here. And then for these, I could right click, I could make them a group and I could call them Phillips. And so what I've got is I've got this collection of different objects in here that I have complete control over. So now for example, I could toggle off the wood in here and I could also toggle on or off the hammers. I could toggle off the different screwdrivers as well as the different kinds of screwdrivers using the visibility right here. And one of the things that makes this really valuable is now instead of having to like double click in here to do a bunch of editing, right? So let's say I wanted to edit this screwdriver for whatever reason. Well, right now I have to double click in my toolbox group, I have to double click in my tools group, double click in my screwdrivers group, double click in my flathead group, and then double click in the medium group right, just to get in here to make this change, just so I can change a material or whatever. And if I wanted to actually edit the face, I would have to double click in here even more. That's a lot of clicking to get to an object. The valuable thing about the outliner is instead of me having to click and click and click and click and click, I can find whatever object I wanna edit. So let's say now I wanted to make a change to the large flathead. I can just come in here and I can just double click on those individual objects like this. So now I'm just inside of this object. So I can just make this change really quickly and then I can just click back out 
in order to get out of this whole thing. So you can use this in order to really quickly get in here and edit and control different things um, inside of your models. So you can use this to control organization. You can use this to edit objects really quickly. You can also set up different scenes with different visibilities. So for example, if I add a new scene in here and I call this one tools. So we're gonna call this tools. Well, inside my tools, I wanna turn off my toolbox so I can just see the tools. Maybe I'll adjust this so that um, so that I get this view right here. But now if I right click and update this, notice how this scene, as long as it's set to save the visibilities in your scene settings, notice how I can set this scene up or I can see just the tools really quickly. So you can use this in order to control your visibilities as well as your organization in SketchUp. All right, so this becomes massively important when we start doing architectural modeling and sending things to layout. I get into that more in depth in my course where I teach you step-by-step -step how to use SketchUp. So if you're interested in learning more about how to use the outliner and SketchUp in general, I will link to my course on this page. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.